Thomas DeVere. Translated by Marissa Miller. Leonardo the Penguin lived at the South Pole. He looked a bit different from the other penguins because his beak was yellow and theirs were red. But none of them seemed to care about that, so Leonardo did neither. What Leonardo did care about was that he couldn't fly, for flying was Leonardo's greatest dream. Every day, Leonardo would smile confidently at his wings and whisper, You'll make soon. And then he would stand on one leg at the top of a cliff, letting the wind brush through his feathers and imagine that he was flying over the ocean. It made him very happy. My friends call me Leo, Leonardo told everyone who passed by. But the truth was, he had no friends. The other penguins thought he was a strange bird because they had never felt the slightest desire to fly. Leonardo, on the other hand, showed no interest in swimming, which is what penguins do best. Day after day, he watched birds soaring overhead, and day after day, he checked to see if his wings had grown at all. They hadn't, but that didn't stop him. He hopped and flapped and hopped and flapped, but it was no use. He never left the ground. The other penguins made fun of Leonardo's dream of flying. One day, they walked past him laughing. What's the matter, bad flying weather? They teased. What do you know about flying weather? Leonardo shouted back. He would even fly in a blizzard, he thought bravely, if he could fly at all. Despite their taunts, Leonardo worked on his daily flight exercises, but soon gave up. Definitely not flying weather, he admitted sadly. The next day, Leonardo saw a bird with long, slender wings and a yellow beak soaring silently in the sky. He had never seen a bird fly so beautifully. When the bird landed close by, Leonardo went running up to him. I'm Leo, he said, out of breath. May I please look at your wings? But of course, said the bird, surprised. I'm Otto Albatross, he added, unfolding his unbelievably long wings. When I grow up, my wings will be that big too, declared Leonardo. Well, Leo, said Otto kindly, that might take a few years. A few years? No! Leonardo wanted to fly right here, right now. He examined Otto's wings very carefully, then rushed to the shore. There he gathered as many sticks as he could and carried them to an open field. Curious, Otto glided down from the cliff. At Leonardo's request, Otto opened his wings wide. Leonardo studied them once more and began to set out the sticks he had collected. Otto was amazed when he saw what the little penguin had in mind. Leonardo was finished. Look at my wings, he cried, just my size. Do you really think they will work? asked Otto doubtfully. But Leonardo wasn't discouraged. He was certain that with new wings he could finally fly. He waddled bravely to the cliff and peered down. He was feeling a little queasy, but when a gentle breeze ruffled his feathers, Leonardo breathed deeply took a running start, and crashed right into a snow drift. What happened? He asked, digging himself out of the powdery snow. Are you okay, Leo? asked Otto. I am, but my new wings are, replied Leonardo. Come down here and see what I landed on. They dug through the deep snow. Leo, said Otto, astonished. That looks like a flying machine. You wouldn't have found it if it hadn't been for those crazy wings of yours, he added, laughing. As evening neared, the wind picked up and swirled the snow around. Leonardo and Otto had to work hard to free the flying machine. Wow, said Otto. It's not the latest model, but it is in good condition. In good condition? 
oh, I don't know, do you think maybe we could? Leonardo asked. We'll see tomorrow, Leo, the albatross replied. I'm so tired, I can barely stand. Leonardo was exhausted too, but he was so excited. It took him a long time to fall asleep. The next morning, Leonardo cleared out the cockpit and found a flying cap, goggles, and a scarf. Now he looked like a real pilot. He also found a flight manual and studied the instructions carefully. Meanwhile, Otto busied himself with the propeller. The motor rattled, clanged, clattered, and started. Hooray! Otto cheered, stomping the ground with his big feet. Suddenly, penguins came from every direction, curious to see what all the excitement was about. Otto called out to them, All aboard! Fasten your seatbelts! The penguins hopped onto the wings. Spread out evenly, Otto commanded. He turned to Leonardo. Don't worry, I'll help you, he said with a wink. Get ready for takeoff, Leonardo shouted. First the plane jerked and jolted and rocked and shook, and then slowly it began to roll faster and faster until it lifted off the ground. They were airborne. Leonardo was flying. You did it, Leo! You're flying! Isn't it wonderful? cried Otto. It's fantastic! Leo shouted back. I'm flying over the sea. I'm flying! All too soon, Otto said, we'd better head back. There's not much fuel in the tank. As soon as the flying machine had touched down, the motor began to sputter and the propeller came to a stop. That was a perfect landing, declared Otto. But Leo, that was also your first and last flight. Fuel was gone. That didn't bother Leonardo. He was overjoyed. His dream had come true. A cheer rose from the crowd. Bravo, Leo! You really did it! Hooray! Hooray! Leonardo's perseverance made his dream of flying come true, and he worked just as hard learning how to swim. The other penguins were very proud of him, and from then on called him Leo. When Otto stopped by for a visit, Leonardo showed him how he could leap into the water from the cliff. Now you're really flying, said Otto admiringly. Yes, but this time, I'm using my very own swimming wings, replied Leonardo, laughing. The end.